Yeah. All right, now I'm recording. So yeah, so yeah, there's there's a lot and there's a lot inside of those things. Those were literally I was gonna make, I was gonna make an entire like thing, and I didn't have the time to do it. So, you know, <laughs> you get what you get what you can. Um, but like this is gonna be the general outline. Um, but so when I'm when I'm like talking about the game and thinking about the game. Or like talking to a, a player about the game, or talking to like other coaches or anything, or maybe I'm watching content. There's not really any comprehensive like guides or like comprehensive ways to like think about the game or look at the game. Um, it's mainly a bunch of different little parts and pieces. And there's not really anything that like tries to bring it all together. Um, so there's what happens is you get like like if you're like if let's say for instance like there's like ten volumes of the of, of like the book on leak like how an encyclopedia has different volumes, and many in many cases like a player like as they go through their leak career, they only have a, a few volumes of information. Um, so they're missing things and what each player like is missing might be different. So like, you know, one, um, one player, uh, maybe their support main. So they only have like volumes six through 10 and they never learn the other stuff. Whereas like a top laner has a different perspective on the game because they've only played top lane. Um, so we're going to try to bridge everything and think about the game a little differently. Um, so, just in, it's like if you're looking at the thing, um, don't move stuff. So, basically, when you're introduced to League, like, what is, what is, like, the goal? Like, what what is the point of playing a game of League of Legends? And, like, a lot, a lot of these, just to clarify, uh, a lot of these are going to be very, very simple questions. And it, the simple, the simple answer is what I want you, is what I want. It's like, what is, like, what is the goal of League? To have fun. No. Fun? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just... just <laughs> fun. I, I, was, I don't remember... I was... I sent... A, I'll spoil this. So I sent, I sent Kutel and Wind a video. <laughs> I watched yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he said... He literally says, like, if you want to have fun, go play Fortnite. <laughs> you don't play League for fun. <laughs> well, you haven't watched it yet. You didn't watch it yet. But it's a good video. Um, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, that guy's really good. Um... But yeah, the point of League is the first team to blow up this Nexus wins the game. So from this, it's somewhere, let's look at, because I'm going to be making a lot of comparisons to like other games. So like if you're looking at a game like chess, um, very similar setup. It's like, what's the, what's the goal of chess? Well, you need to take out the king. Oh my god, is it going to ping every time I write? I hope so. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm trying to think what other games. You ever take the king in chess? Yeah, but, but like you get the point. Like yeah, obviously yes, you don't actually take the king. Um, but yeah, the the but you get as close yeah, 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 to yeah, 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 as yeah, possible yeah. to taking the king because you never yeah, actually person. take it. Um, <laughs> and and league is kind of set up in a similar way, to where all right, the game start. There's not a set amount of time in the game. Like the game could go on forever. It's not like a game of like football or basketball or, or, um, yeah, Fortnite, where eventually like the game ends and whoever has the most points or whoever has the most kills wins. And what that means is that this is a it's a heavy heavy strategy game. Heavy strategy game, holy. So we need to treat it as a strategy game. And a lot of players, like, when they first start playing, um, what they see, like, what is at the top of the, like, what's at the top of the league? Uh, like, when you're playing a game at the top of the HUD. Like, what's kills. a scoreboard? Yeah, it's a scoreboard, and it just kills. And there's a score count. So when you're playing the game, and you get a kill, it goes up there, and you have one more point. So if you're new to the game, and you're just playing, you see, like, okay, like, it, like all the information, a lot of the information in league are aren't really relative or aren't really related to the end goal of league. 
So it's kind of like, it's it's always been kind of weird that it's set up like that. Like, why does it even show kills at all? When kills aren't, like, all kills are is a representation of how much gold someone has. Like, that's all it is. It's not, it doesn't determine who wins. Like, I'm sure many of you have had games where you have less kills, but you win the game. And even gold doesn't yeah yeah <laughs> and even even gold even even gold like there's no like there's no amount of gold and there's no like amount of kills that wins you the game it doesn't exist and, like these are very basic concepts but like even like in your own play you can find instances where your actions are geared or like your actions if i said like why are you doing this like it has a tie-in with something like gold or or kills or something and if you like run out the the lines of like reason further like they never it never gets you to the end result of nexus explodes um so what we want to be doing is in these games that we're playing is we want to get to the end game state of the nexus exploding um and there's a few ways to do that but like how like you kind of can just work backwards each step um a common thing in chess to do if you're learning the game of chess, is you you memorize a lot of um, board states of end games, end game board states, and like you'll like solve from there. So like, yeah, they'll be they like they'll be like a board state, and they're like, oh, like to win this game, it's like under ten moves or something. If you like, if you like use like chess.com or something, like there there every day there's like new ones where you can like just solve from different end states. And the reason you do that is, um because you have to know how to actually win the game. Like if you know how to take pieces, like it doesn't do anything for you in the game. Like you don't win that way. So League's very similar. Like when you're playing League, the whole point of League is to get to different end states based on what you're provided at the beginning. So you need to know how, like what different end states look like and what are winning positions from different states. Um, So for example, like if we're looking at the map, like how do you get to the Nexus? Very simple question, right? Mm-hmm. How do you get there? Through a lane. Through a lane? All right, like, which lane? If you just want to get to the Nexus, the Nexus, the fastest mid. way. Mid. Uh, the mid lane. All right. Mid lane, then. Yeah, you go mid. All right, so that means what's in the way of mid lane? Towers. The, the, tower the, the inhib? Towers. Yeah, the inhib and that tower. And then you have two more towers. Okay, so if your goal was to end the game as fast as possible, like, what would you do? Right. You run it down, yeah. You run it down mid, exactly. So if you're in a in a game state where you're trying to end the game as fast as possible, like what should you be doing? Open yeah, just run it down mid. Okay. So there's a bunch of different situations where you're like the end result is you run it down mid. Let's say, for example, you just won a team fight at 30 minutes. The respawn time is like 40 seconds. Well, guess what? You want to win? Run it down mid. You just got bear and F, and then you ace them after. What you you think you can end the game? What do you do? Run it down mid. Um. So you can kind of work backwards from this. Like, okay, so we know that when we want to win the game, the the quickest and easiest way, and that is why they like uh, for a side tangent, like the reason the NA RAM exists is because of that concept. Because it's a very simple concept to install into a team. Is okay. You want to end the game? Group mid, go mid, run it down. Like that, they have the right idea. Like there's a lot, lot of other things that like are deeper meaning that have like that are like too deep for the teams to understand, um, or too hard to execute in the teams' minds, which is why they like default to that. But like the underlying idea is correct, in which if you wanted to win the game, the fastest way is to just run it down mid. Um, so now we know, like, okay, we we know that we need to blow up the nexus. We know that to win the game, we want to we want to go down mid lane. Okay. Um, so now you think about, okay, what are some challenges to actually get to this? Like, how do you actually get to the point where you can run it down mid? You're stronger than them. Oh yeah. Yeah. You could just be straight up stronger and you can just group as five and team fight down mid lane or right in front of mid tower or something. Mm -hmm. And then like, what are, like, what would, what would be some situations where like, you can't do that? When you're stronger than you. Sure, yeah, you can't win the 5v5. Like, what else? Uh, you're down a member. Yeah, numbers numbers disadvantage, okay. You don't have minion wave? Okay, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, if you well, the the thing I'm looking for is uh is wave clear. If like they have too much wave clear, right? You'll never be able to actually get your minions into the into the tower and and inhibs to end to clear to end the game. Mm, yeah, exactly. Or one of your or a Zier, um, chimneys like that. Okay, so like now we know like okay like in like we just named some situations where we can run it down mid and some situations where we can't run it down mid, and I think none of, none of those are really like they're not very deep, but it's in games like being able to recognize these different situations and then apply them. So like now in a game like we all know that. If they don't have very much wave clear and we win the 5v5, like one option we can do is just try to run it down mid. Maybe we have a wombo comp or something to where we can just dive them and win the game. Like with a big minion wave. Like we know. I don't think your erasing is working. Oh, is it not erasing anything again? Because I've been erasing yeah. stuff. On my screen, it erases stuff. I'll just reset everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah you have to let me know because I'll have to erase everything every so often. Because I, I will constantly keep drawing, and it's going to get super messy for you guys if you don't tell me to erase. Because <laughs> on my screen, it, I, my eraser works. So. We just have right. to not ever erase. Yeah. Don't ever tell them. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, so like now we know that there are a bunch of... like We, we named a few situations where, like, okay, um, if these conditions are in place, we can just group as five and go down mid. And now we're like, okay, like what are the conditions where we can't do that? Well, if they have a lot of wave clear or we don't win the 5v5 or we don't, like maybe we're down a member. And then it's like, okay, well, what do you need to do if, for example, like what do you do if we don't, like they have too much wave clear? Like what do we need to do then? Baron. Maybe okay. We'll yeah, maybe we need Baron. Maybe we split push. Um, maybe we split push. All right, is that it? Mm -hmm. like look for picks? Yeah, look for picks. Or just go in far ahead? Yeah. Well don't no no don't don't do that. <laughs> no 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 no. Don't just don't just go in. I distinctly remember um someone flash Nautilus under a Oh god. Fucking Rick Nix. Um so yeah, so if if we don't if we don't win the five v five straight up in front of their mid tower, like in a in a fight or in a dive or something and they have too much wave clear for us to actually like siege the tower because that's what that's called if if they don't have enough wave clear and we can freely like siege the tower to get it without or then go into a dive um if you watch like lcs lck whatever like you'll see these happen like g2 does it all the time like in their games last year where like they would just go mid and then like or sometimes they'd go bot and they would just start taking siege in the tower and then they'd go for the dive and like good teams, like they're confident enough that they think they they know that they're stronger, they can execute it, and they'll win the game off of it. Um, and like obviously we're not that like, like we're not that level of team like skill wise, but we should still have the confidence in like we know that this is the right thing to do, we know that we should win this. Let's do it. Let's attempt it. And then if it doesn't work, we can figure out like why later. Like maybe we're just like not good enough players to make it work. Maybe like we just need to like not misplay it. Etc. But all of that's fine as long as um, this is where like I talk about like intent. Like as long as like the intent was correct, like the mistake isn't that you went for it. The mistake is like you misplayed it, and that's fixable through practice and stuff, or through like improving like small micro decisions or small micro plays. <laughs> but the bigger problem comes when you're not making the right decisions, which is what this whole thing like is going to try to start fixing. Um, okay, so we identified a few different things. Okay. So now we know that um, if we can't hang out through all this, so like if we can't just run it down mid, we have a couple different options. We can split push, we can set up for picks, um, we can set up, we can do Baron. Like there's one other like major one that's that's kind of, just, you have to think for a second uh, for it. Is it just Dragon? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, Baron Elder is like the same thing. Um, okay. the, the one I was looking, the other one I'm looking for is you can bait out a fight at the objective so like it's not like you're not actually going to do the baron but you'll start it so that they come in to fight you because you know like you can outfight them in the in the river versus like out fighting them because there'll be situations where like you might be stronger in the 5v5 but maybe you're not strong enough to dive them whereas if you op if you fight them in the open over here um maybe it's set easier to set up a team fight for your team so you bait them to the baron so you can team fight there um and again, like if you watch a lot of high level league, like our the concepts we just named are basically like like what are those? Like 
team comps, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what team comps are. It's like the team, your team comp. Your team camp win, your team camp win condition. Like that's why that's that's why that's called that. It's because, like that's your setup for the end game to get to that mid, uh, inhib nexus explosion, victory. Like either you maybe your team has is a better pick comp. Maybe your team's a better split comp. Um, maybe you need Baron to end because of your comp. Maybe you want a five v five in open space versus five v five in under their tower. Like those are all the different ways, because like as you come further and further back from, um, it's kind of like a pyramid in a in a way. Like the top of the pyramid is blow up the nexus, and as you start getting further away, like the list of things you can do expands. Um. So I I think I said something yesterday about like before, um, the team I was coaching, uh, warriors used to always, we used to always run pick comps. So a big thing we focused on was like how to set up for a pick, like how to set up around Baron, like to get picks, how to set up around objectives to get picks. Like if we were running split push comps, which um, with Panda's last team, like okay, like occasionally we'd pick a split comp, but it never worked because we couldn't we couldn't execute them properly. They're a little bit harder to execute. Um, most teams just default into five v five comps because those are those take like the not the least amount of thought, but like those are kind of the easiest. Um, to execute, especially for like players that aren't with each other for a long time. Right. Yep. Oh, I need to draw my arrows. So I give split, and like I'm not gonna talk about like all the different like until we're like basically we kind of just like what you can do like arbitrarily is like is just pick one of these and be like okay like this is the one we want to actually do like. Usually how teams, teams don't decide this way, but like if you reverse engineers it, like this is how they could decide it, is that you just say like, okay, I think uh, fighting, I think champions that fight in open spaces, like in front of Baron are the best in the meta. So those are the comps we should play and those are the end game states we should aim for. Or like if you're like, I think split comps are the best in this meta. So then maybe we'd aim for split comps or I think pick comps are the best in this meta and you just aim to play around pick comps. Um, exactly, yeah. Or like being at, like picking dive comps or something. So, like the the exact comp you play, um, depending on like what you th- your belief in the meta is and what champions you believe are good. Um, but other than those things, like at this level of play, it's it's ma- it's like mainly player skill. Like if the team and the player and the players can execute their comp better, then they will win the games, regardless of whether or not in the quote-unquote meta the champions or something aren't the best. Like, I can I can get a team of, like, Masters players and put them on off-meta shit, and as long as it fits a team comp and they know how to play and they execute it properly, like, they will beat you guys because they're better players. So, like, at a certain point, meta will matter, and, like, cha- relative champion strength will matter, but at this level, it's mainly... Like when when skills closer, it's mainly how you play and the decisions you make that decide the games. Um, so if we go back to where am I at? Okay, like game objectives. Okay, so just looking at I think I think one of the more popular things to do. Um, or the next thing I wanted to talk about. Okay, is if you wanted to. We'll talk a little bit about Baron. It's like if your team needs to get Baron, like how, like what is the um, most, what would be the most helpful, or what are some of the most helpful things to help your team get Baron? Like the uh, lane priority. Yeah, yeah, like lane priority is one. Like lane priority is good. Um, a strong split pusher, like pressure on the bot lane. All right, right? Is that what you're saying? Like pressure bot lane. Okay, yeah. All right, what else? Uh, strong team yeah, picks, 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 yeah, picks, picks, picks are good, yeah. And this goes uh, for like Elder. Speed, like Baron speed of your yeah, team. yeah. This is mainly for objectives, so it's like Baron, but also like Elder and Soul, because Soul's so strong still. Um, you could kind of treat it almost as the same level as Baron. Stronger, depending yeah. on what comp you like, de- it, obviously depending on the, like we're not gonna get into the two specifics, but depending on like the comps and the and the champions and everything, like the souls might be more important than Baron. But for this, we'll just assume that they're equal, um, along with Elder. Control yeah, yeah, vision setup and 
that's more of ancillary because like you don't actually need vision set up to get a pick um sometimes people just walk into you or like if they have to deal with a mini wave like what about that what happening in not this world but the worlds before this a lot of times uh, the, the, the one of the, the reasons that the Korean team cited that they didn't do very well mm -hmm. was that they were used to people only going for things if they had the vision to do so yeah but other teams from other countries would just go for things if they just because they felt like the enemy didn't have the vision even if they didn't really have the vision mm -hmm. to do yeah because you don't need it's the same thing with like um you can see the same concept apply with jungle tracking. Like, you don't need vision of the enemy jungler to know where he is. If you see someone mid lane and it's been 10 seconds, there's, an, there's a limited amount of distance they could have gotten away from that last known position based on champion's movement speeds. So, like, if you see someone mid lane, it takes more than 10 seconds for them to get to one of the side lanes. So you know that they can't be there. So you don't need vision there to know that they're not there. Um, yeah, but the other thing I'm looking for is... Uh, is taking this bot in hip, so having a minion wave of pressure, like Baron's a Baron's a lot easier to take if, and so now instead of having, you don't have to actually commit a man to bot lane. It's basically playing six on five because they have a super minion wave to stop. Um, yeah, be detrimental early mm -hmm. at least this was before. well this was more the case at the, near the end of last season now that there's basically two huge objectives it's less of a yeah yeah it's, it'd be swapped so um the end of last season where someone's kicking an early top inhib would actually lose you the game mm -hmm. because you, the enemy would basically get free exp the entire game constantly going into them or at least for you know the three minute period where the inhibs down and they can often let they can literally let it get taken again yeah by super minions if they really want to and what happens is it's really easy to clear top lane and also be near Baron. Yeah, exactly. Because like, extremely easy. Yeah, because you can clear it near the outer, where the outer turret would be. Yeah, the champions that right like champions with high wave clear are usually the carries, and the carry would be in closer proximity to the Baron. Um, it works the opposite way if like you're going for Elder or Dragon Soul. Like you would want the top inhib down, um, because it puts the carries or the main wave clear, which is usually the carries, um, further away from the objective, so that they. Because if you don't mm -hmm. use them properly, you're basically feeding the enemy away back into the game. Yeah. If you don't use the window and then the inhib comes back up, they've gotten way more money. Yeah, the gold's even upped. Yeah. Have. And if they're out if they skill better than you, because usually if a lot of times if you're the stronger team early but they outscale you, you'll you might get an early inhib. Um it happened all the time when I was playing I played like forty games of Kale and in about like ten of those games the other team would get an inhib, and I would just free farm mid lane for three minutes, hit my hit my level six, hit my items, win the next team fight, win the game, because like they didn't do anything in that time to to like win. Because sure they got the mid, they got the inhib, but nothing they did after that would win. And then eventually we had scale them. Um, but it's the same like what like that explanation is the same. Like though you only want inhibs when you can use them for something. So if you're looking at it like, okay, it's like, when would we want bot inhib? Well, it's when we can set up for Baron and with that time window. We want top inhib when we can set up for Dragon or Elder in that time window. Like, when do you want min inhib then? Like, what are the situations when you'd want that? Technically, it could be for either objective, since it does... When you're trying to end the game. Yeah, when you're when you're going for the end. Yeah, when you're going for the end. So a situation would be like maybe you're just pushing up mid to win the game. Like obviously have to go through the inhib, you take it. Well, let's say you can't. They can defend their two inhib towers. So if you take mid inhib, they can just defend the inhib towers. Well, what you might what you might want to do is just leave the inhib up, go to one of the other side lanes, get that tower, get that inhib, come back, get the mid inhib as well, mid inhib as well, and then you can press your top lane. Um, but there's a lot of cases where leaving the inhib up is better and teams will take the inhib because it's just something you do. It doesn't give you, like, does anyone know how much gold inhibs give you? Not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like literally, nothing. yeah, it's 50 gold. It's literally 50 gold. Like, there's the, so like, it's not something you think about until, like, you've actually thought about it. Because normally it's the open inhib. Like, your team, you're playing solo queue, and your team's pinging, like, hey, let's group as five, run down mid, get this open inhib. And you're, I'm just, like, playing solo queue and screaming, like, no, I keep pinging. I'm like, why are you, Why would we do this? Like, there's no reason to go get it right now. There's no objectives up. Like, yeah, like, you're literally... They've already reached the 
Yeah, you're starving yourself of gold because the minion ways are just going to eat. They're going to eat your, the gold you could get. And unless you're directly... Yeah, basically. So um, if you're stronger than them, but you can't end the game and there's no objectives up, you just literally want to sit in mines and farm? Yeah, you just make them... If you're stronger than them and you let the waves come back into you and you... Like, you could literally just either freeze or just have it slow push and force them to either stay out of XP and CS range or force them to come out and contest it where you can fight them if you're stronger. Um, and the only time you'd be shoving out is say you want to go take their entire jungle. Yeah, the if you're, yeah, if you're trying to get, take camps or you're trying to get control of an area or something with vision. Um, that's something we've taught. Like, I don't think we've done a, a lesson yet on vision um but so when you're getting vision like most of the time you want wave part pri lane priority so like if you want to give control of like the entire barren side you'd shove up mid lane and then walk you'd drop a ward in the middle of the lane you'd walk over you'd put down your vision you would walk around come back to mid catch the bouncing wave um that's we'll, we'll, we'll go over that when we get there okay so we kind of now have our ways of, like, I, I just, like, what what I've just done is I've kind of identified, like, in chess, what would be those different end game states. Um, so now you have to go, go, like, further back, like, think of, like, okay, how do we actually get to the setup we want for our team comp? Because that's what this part was about. It's about, like, depending on what team comp you're playing, compare, and it's not just, like, with your team comp, because, like, if you're playing a split push comp, but they have a comp that counters that, you can't actually split push versus it. So like split push might be your number one win condition, but you might have to go to your second or third like win condition. Like maybe your team isn't a 5v5 team, but you're comparatively against them a better 5v5 team. So instead of playing to like your number one strength, you have to play to like your number two or three because that's your winning hand. Right. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of what game that is. Um, no, it's not. It's not hold 'em. It's a different game. It's basically a card game, but like, where occasionally like you'll. It's not for. I, I'm not gonna think of it. But like basically, you get rid of a high card because you know. No, nah, it. Yeah. The one with four sides, right? Maybe. I'm Are not you gonna. Guys talk about hearts or spades. Um. No. Nah. Yeah, it's. I'm not. I'm not gonna remember it. I'm gonna move past it. I'm gonna move past it. All right. But yeah, so so basically these are like the end game states. Like depending on your comp comparatively, like you always have to think of this stuff comparatively to the other team comp and what the other team wants to do. Um because again, like every team comp has strengths and weaknesses. So like if you're playing versus like a siege comp, but they have really poor um they don't they're like all squishy. So they, they have like no ways to check bushes for picks. And like you're playing like a split comp, but like you do have some pick, like maybe you just want to play a play it like a split a pick comp because that gives you the best chance of winning and then you just have to set up as a pick comp um but you wouldn't just try to default to splitting because maybe that's not like even though that's the best for your comp it's not the winning hand in this case um but yeah so this this is like the end game states these are like taking objectives um very, very basic stuff that i i usually call this like the fundamentals of of like late game or fundamentals of like macro. Um, so now you have to think about like, okay, how do we actually get to these points to where we're making decisions? Um, and part of that is like, you just have to, for Baron, you just have to get to 20 minutes and then you can take the Baron. For Dragon, like you have to actually set up and take Dragons before to get to either Soul or to get to Elder. Um, what is this? Fire, oh yeah. But yeah, like mid the mid game, like before this, there's a lot of skirmishing. There's a lot of team fights. There's a lot of um, not getting like farming, basically before this, because like we're actually gonna switch to. Let's jump. Let's jump back a little bit. Okay, so when when you're first in like let's say like level one, you just loaded in. And you're going to lanes like what what is the goal of like going to lane like why do why do people go to lanes like why does the jungler 
Yeah. XP. Everyone, yeah, yes. everyone, everyone gets, everyone wants gold and everyone wants XP. And the reasons you do that is because um, your champion's strongest point is not at level one. Your champion's stronger point is at a point beyond level one. So you need to go to lane or you need to go to the jungle or you go support and you get your gold and you get your XP to get to the points in the game that you want to get to to set up for your end your end game conditions. So this is where like item item power spikes, level power spikes, etc come into play. And if you're thinking about it from the end game result, if you're like okay, like if I'm playing if I'm playing Yasuo and my strongest point in the game is when I have two or three items um which maybe it's three items for some builds, two items for others, then that's the point I want to get to because then that lets us set up the best for maybe the fights in front of Baron or something, like based on your team comp. Or maybe that sets you best up for like the dives under tower. Like maybe once Yasuo has like uh, Static Shiv, Infinity Edge, Sterox Gauge, that you can dive towers super easily and now you guys can set up for a dive mid or something. Um, but you need to get to that point. So everything Yasuo does before in the game should be setting himself up to get to that point. Right? Nine, six times. Well, die ten times. Wait. You need a ten death fire spike. <laughs> yeah, so you want to be... And, like, there's, like, smaller power spikes inside then, like, relative power spikes and a bunch of other, like, details that um, we've either gone over in the past or, like, we can go over in the future. But the general idea is... You go to lane at level 1 to farm and get to your spikes so that you're stronger. So that you can use your strengths to get you to the winning endgame conditions. Alright, so like when you're in, like when you go to lane, um, and this is probably something I've talked about, like I've, I've probably talked about a lot, especially in like the VOD reviews, is you want to make sure you have your plan of like, okay, like what do I actually want to do, like, um, for my first recall, because you can kind of segment the game into, you know, first recall timing, second recall slash dragon timing, like, uh, whatever third recall would be. But you can kind of segment it out in 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 your like the separations. Um, so like if you're draw if like back in the old days, like when they drew maps, they use like rivers and mounds as like boundary lines. So you can kind of think of it the same way, like, you're like, okay, this first phase of the game is, like, me getting my zeal item, and then the second phase of the game is me finishing that item, and the third phase of the game is getting, like, IE or something, or getting I something like that. And inside of each of those, you should have a plan for, like, what you want to be doing and how you want to be, like, playing the game. So, like, if you're playing Yasuo mid, and you're like, okay, like, what item am I going for first? Static shift? Okay, so that means that... 1200 gold I want to be able to recall, buy, and then come out. I don't want to be in lane longer than that because if I get the 1200 gold buy and get back on the map, I'll be stronger than the other person. Whereas if I don't do that, um, or they get their buy first or something, maybe you're weaker. And then it makes it harder for you to actually get to one of the end game spots where you can win the game. Um, if you're playing someone like... If you're playing someone like Renekton, like... You know, you have to get, you have to like have good timings early. You have to be able to get leads early, or else, like, you can't set up for your end game because, like, one of the only ways Renekton can win is like, either he splits or, or he, flanks and dives like in fights. And if he can't do either of those things, like, he's useless. It's like a four v four. Um, that's a term called, I I call it modes. Um. I think I heard LS calling it that first, but like the different modes champions have, like that's what that means. Is like what are the different ways like a champion can conduct himself in the different end game positions or in the different like mid to late game positions. And so like some champions have a lot more that they can do inside of those. Watch it. Um Okay. Does anyone have any questions or anything so far? Nope. I know. Good, because I just needed a break for water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, most of this is is stuff, like, you might have known or you 
like that's maybe like you knew like 90 percent of this like there's still like the 10 percent that is important information um <clears throat> so yeah like you can see how like all the different points in the game kind of connect to the end game results so like what we're going to be doing on thursday um i updated the thing so we're going to be meeting on thursday to talk about draft and like you're gonna have to have in mind like all of these different things like like what do you actually think is the best way to play the game because a lot of times like, if i ask someone like oh or like if i just talking to someone i'm like hey like what's strong right now if i just ask someone like hey what's like the strongest mid laner right now like they might say something like i don't know someone give me a champion that's strong mid lane talon sure talon yeah sure so if you're like man talon's so broken right now and i'm like okay like like, why is Talon good? And you're like, well, like, he always just roams and kills my teammates. And I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, yeah, but, like, how does he win the game? And if he doesn't get those kills, like, how does he actually win the game? And the answer is he doesn't. It's like, to me, Talon's not a very good champion. Because he is a very, like, he has a very small window or small mode of how to play the game. He has to roam. He has to get kills. And then he has to snowball into a win, or else he's kind of useless. Like, he doesn't team fight that great late. Like, he doesn't team it that great. His split push isn't that strong compared to, like, other mid laners that can split push. Like, his dive is okay, but if he can't one-shot people, like, that's kind of, like, why assassins don't really see a lot of high-level play. Like, if these were actually, like, the strongest champions, like, sometimes teams pick bad champions, like, you know... Korea picks Tom Kench a lot. It's not a good champion, but a lot of times, like eventually, they'll figure. Like teams pick the best champions, <laughs> um, and Talon doesn't get played. Like, I think I think actually Talon has been played a few times in like uh, European League. Uh, <clears throat> he uh, got played at like an MSI game. Or yeah, something. well, that's, when, yeah, it didn't matter or something. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's kind of like Le like LeBlanc has a little more freedom than Talon, like. Even if she doesn't get super fat, like she'll hit her if she farms well and hits her items, like she can still one shot people a little bit easier. Yeah, but like if she has a good matchup, if she has a good matchup, um, I want to say I just I think Trophy played her a game at Kespa. I think it's Trophy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's why she's. She's usually, like, you're not going to blind pick her. And that's something we're going to be talking about is, like, okay, like, what champions can we, like, should we actually be blind picking? Which are, like, should be champions that are really strong and good in a lot of situations. And the reason is, like, when we get to these endgame points, it's like, well, like, are they, can these champions actually, like, win the game? Or are they just kind of, like, annoying? And, like, maybe they'll win, but, like, the reasons they win aren't really relative, like... A lot of times, like a, like, a champion will get wins, but it's not really the champion that's enabling the wins. Like, maybe the champion can only win games when another champion is present. Like, like maybe Yasuo is only a good champion if you have X number of, like, supportive champions that can enable him. Um, or maybe it's something where, like, he's good in, he can, he's good in situations where, like, he doesn't have any other knockups on his team. Or your team is very heavy magic damage in the rest of your Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's the only AD or something. Um, okay, um, let's see here. So I posted in, in the documents, I posted the fundamentals and then kind of like explanations. And these all kind of tie, these all tie in as well because... Like, if you look, it's like, I right, build orders, build orders, champion combos, CSing, minimap awareness, mouse control spacing, trading, warding. Like, these are all things that affect how you get to these different endgame states. Um, and it's where, like, if you're, if, like, you're rating yourself on, like, a 1 to 10 scale on each one of these, like, if you have all perfect 10s, like, you're going to win a lot of games. Because you're going to get to a lot of these different end game points on your champions where you're going to be stronger and then once you're in these end game points it's pretty easy to win the game as long as you have like an idea of what you should be doing and even sometimes like there are players that have very good mechanics 
that don't win games because they don't know what they're doing at these points of the game. Or there are teams that don't know what they're doing at these points in the game. Um, okay. What else do we want to talk about? I'm going to lose my voice if I keep up at this pace. <laughs> I'll talk some more about early game. Um, I have more stuff to tie in for early game now that I think about it. So we've, the assignments recently, um, not recently, like since the beginning, like, um, and we'll get to communication as well. Um, like since the beginning, I was like, okay, like there are things you have to know. There's like some implicit knowledge you have to have to be able to like play the, like, there's a reason I didn't start with like macro. There's a reason I like didn't start with communication. Like we started with a bunch of basics because you have to be able to understand those to even get to these end game points. Um, for example, like the the early game is mainly like, okay, can I farm effectively to get to my items so I can be strong at the points that I'm strong in? And that means that like you shouldn't be... You shouldn't be like randomly fighting or you shouldn't be randomly shoving or you shouldn't be randomly um, invading or you should, like you should never be doing anything randomly. Everything, everything you do, if, if I ask you like, like, hey, why, why are we doing this here? Like, why are we crashing this wave here? Why do we keep shoving under tower? Why are we playing the wave like, um, why are we playing the wave up here? Versus crashing and letting it bounce back to us. And you can't tell me, like, hey, I'm doing this so that... Um, I don't know why you do that. But, like, let's say you're doing it because, like, you want to bait their jungler in for, like, a 2v2 fight or something. And you win, you want that 2v2 fight because, like, your win condition is bot getting ahead and you want to open up mid lane so that you can roam bot with your jungler. Like, that would be a good, that'd be a good reason, like, but, like, that's kind of, like, the level of thought I'm going to be looking for, and I'm going to try to get you guys to, because then, like, we can actually work on stuff, if you know, if you have an idea of what you want to do, and a lot of the, and same with, like, communication, like, if, um, so like I was reading through, we did the communication, um, is it this one? We did the, we did the communication assignment. Okay. And I just posted something in chat. Um, Panda, it's something from Pandas from, I was reading his thing and I had you guys watch a, one of the videos. Um, some of you haven't done it yet, which do your assignments. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the communication one, uh, if you ever, if you haven't watched it, most of you should, you should have all watched it already. But if it was the challenger team and they played like three games or something, um, and Panda wrote this, um, and it says something they do really well in the videos. Everyone is tracking their counterparts and making quick, concise statements about themselves and their counterparts leading to a more informed team. There's also a huge lack of self-boasting. I think a, a lot of this is also comes with the fact that they have a more accurate assessment of the game state, which allows them to realize what they're capable of and communicate that. Okay. And what, like, if you think about this in the context of, okay, what did I say early? Like, a few weeks ago, like, I, the reason I don't do communication early is because you need the accurate, you need to be able to accurately assess game states. And you need to be able to know what you're doing. So like when we're communicating stuff, it's like if if Wind is playing mid lane and he doesn't know what he's doing and he's just randomly doing stuff and then Panda's trying to like plan out how we want the game to go. Like maybe we all know, maybe draft with the, with the comp, like we drafted like a Jinx or something, um, which means like we need the Jinx to be in a good, like to get to her items so that she's strong at like 23 minutes or something, like once she gets to three items and wins making decisions that are 
independent from that end goal. Like you're going to put the game, like the game's going to be much harder and be in weird spots because not everyone is on the same page. Not everyone is like trying to get to the same points in the game. Um, it'd be almost like if you, which I don't know if there's any video, I might look for a video. I kind of want a video of chess, someone playing chess, but it's like teams of people playing, but they can't talk to each other. I feel like that's four a thing. Chess. Yeah, four-way chess. Dude, but like, it's, is it just the two teams or it's, is there four teams? I haven't. It's No, it's two teams. Okay. You can play teams. Yeah, because that's what I would want. Like, no communication. But, like, that's basically what this... Like, that's basically kind of similar to League. It's like, you know, if if, if you know, if you're playing chess and you're on a team, or if, like, I was over the break. Over the break, I don't know if you've played the game. Um, it's called Codenames. Um, and if you haven't played the game Codenames, we'll explain it real quick. It's a card, it's a card game. Well, it's... There's cards and, like... Uh, each each team is secret. Your secret agents, and you're trying to find. You're trying to explain to your team where, like, they have to pick cards. This is, I'm not explaining it very well, but <laughs> basically, you you have to convey information to your team about what cards to pick. But you can only use one word, and it has to relate to the words on the cards. So, like, there were times where I would say a word that I thought related to the cards, and my team didn't figure it out. Because to them, like, I don't know, like one of the cards would say pirate and I would say ocean. And then so they have to figure out that ocean means I wanted them to pick the pirate card. Um, but there would be situations where either they wouldn't figure it out or that they would uh, add too much meaning to it. Or they'd be like, well, you know, um, plastic has to do with ocean because there's a lot of, yeah, the ocean's full of it. Yeah, something like that. I'm like, wow, I didn't think of that. <laughs> There's some stuff like that. I was like, I was like, wow, that is not what I intended at all. And like, I'm just going crazy. Um, and those same things can happen in league. Like, if if one person calls for a dive, and you know, Recknips is going in on Nautilus, he's calling for a dive, and none of us are following him up because we're all looking at the situation like, what? <laughs> like, we can't go for a dive. We can't do what? <laughs> <laughs> and then he's going in and he Yikes. dies under tower, and then we all die in a team fight. Like if that, like if like hypothetically that would happen, <laughs> if like hypothetically that would happen, it would be because because of a of a miscommunication. Because we had one idea, one player, one player had one idea about the game, and like what something meant, and the other players didn't have they had a different idea. That's kind of like the purpose of all this is to get us on the same page so that when we're like, when we're like, hey, let's set up for Baron or hey, let's go, let's shove, let's shove bot, let's get bot in him so that we can go for Baron. Like we can, we can just say this and we all understand that, okay, if we're taking mid tower, we don't get the inhib. Like we all just take the tower and then back off and nobody's like staying around like the extra second or two where they might get like caught out or something. Because everyone understands, like we're not actually going for the inhib here. Like we're getting we're in the tower, backing off, going to another lane, getting the tower, getting the inhib, and then maybe we're rotating. Um, and that if someone makes that call, that we all understand what it means. Like if Rex says he wants to dive, he means he's going in right now, and we all all better come with him. He doesn't mean like we're gonna set up for it. When Rex engages, <laughs> true. True. Hey, man. I just speak the truth. True. Alright. So I think... This would be a good spot to stop the video.